this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is a smackdown between David versus Goliath. No, just kidding, but honestly, for big screen Android phones, it's amazing how small the Moto X is compared to the LG G2. Both of these are new kids on the blocks. They're flagships for the respective manufacturers, so I know some of you are still thinking about the HTC One or the Samsung Galaxy S4, but a lot of you have already watched reviews of those in Smackdowns, and you got those down. Or maybe you've owned them and you're already bored of them. So we're going to look at the two new kids on the block now. Time for another Smackdown, folks. This time we have the Moto X that's going to have you craving dessert treats here with a really pretty stock desktop pattern. And here we have the LG G2 that's going to make you want to go on vacation and visit someplace near the ocean. Both of these really have lovely displays, but they're wildly different. 5.2 inches on the LG Full HD IPS display. Really one of the best displays on the market right now on a smartphone. And our little Moto X here, 720p display, 1280 by 720 pixels AMOLED display. That means you get kind of a little bit better than life colors. Those you can see here, relatively speaking, in terms of color saturation, it's it's pretty darn well controlled here. It's not wildly cartoony, overly done like some of the early Droid phones with AMOLED displays or some Samsung phones. And you can see how white the whites are here. Now, both of these have very high pixel densities. Obviously, you're going to get a whole lot more pixels here, over 400 versus almost 300. In either case, for those of us with average eyes looking at this from 7 to 10 inches away, you're probably going to have a hard time seeing the difference. Text looks good on both of them, but we'll compare a book right now to see. So here we are in an ebook, and you can see, looking dead on as we are right now, a brighter, purer looking white than on our AMOLED display. Obviously, the, the text is going to be a little bit teenier, but we can up the font size or zoom it. Really, really nice and sharp. But then again, you know what? This is not too much of a slouch either. It's also very good looking. The interesting thing is IPS displays have wide viewing angles, but some AMOLED displays too can have good viewing angles. And we're going to shift these guys sideways next so you can see what happens off angle. Look at how much whiter the AMOLED display stays. Isn't that interesting? Now, granted, when you're reading a book, you're probably going to be holding it right in front of your face, but keep that in mind if you're doing something like watching a video or reading a web page and you might be holding it down at an angle somewhere so the person sitting next to you on the train isn't looking at what you're looking at. Well, it's unexpected how good, actually, the, the Motorola does there for off-angle viewing and maintaining the color and the clarity. The next obvious thing, really obvious here, folks, and that's why I think that these phones may be for two different people totally, is the LG G2 is about the same size as the other 5-inch phones on the market and the HTC One, which is only 4.7 inches, but those are all big phones. Not unmanageably huge, we're not talking phablet, but big phone fills up my fairly large size hand. And the, the Moto X is 4.7 inches, the same size as the HTC One display, but look at the difference in footprint there. It's a lot smaller, it's a lot more pocketable. Makes a difference, makes it easier to hold, even if you do have fairly good sized hands like I do. It's just fits in more pockets more easily, doesn't pop out of the pocket, feels like, oh, I can just wrap my hands all around it, use it one hand, absolutely no problem, no stretch going on there. And when we look at the back, now this is the stock woven black finish Kevlar composite here. You can also get it white woven. And depending on your carrier, if it's AT&T, for example, you can use Motomaker to choose from 18 different color combinations for the phone as well. Nice, not glossy, doesn't show fingerprints at all, feels good. There's a little dimple. The Motorola logo goes down, so you have a place where your finger kind of homes in. Compare that to the LG G2, which is available in your choice of gets gunky fast black or gets gunky fast white. Very shiny, your usual kind of glossy phone. Not nearly as pretty looking. And while we're doing that, looking at the back here, notice the controls, volume up, volume down, and our power button are on the back. That's LG G2's thing. It's to make the phone a little smaller, supposedly, so they can have that edge-to-edge -edge display. Though I'll say that the Moto X also brings that display out really close to the edges. Not so bad to use when you're holding it. Your fingers really do fall in the right locations. Unless you're using it in landscape mode, then it all kind of falls apart. Aesthetically speaking, I would say, and also ergonomically, that the Moto X is certainly the winner. And for those of you who are looking for something that is more pocketable and a little bit classier looking and not so slippery, the Moto X has a win there. And speaking of the edge-to-edge -edge displays, notice how both of them really come quite far out to the sides of the display. When it comes to processing power, it's a very different story between these two. One of these is for the Specs Maven, and that would be the LG G2. That's our first 
Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 quad-core CPU on the U.S. market clocked at an amazing 2.26 gigahertz with Adreno 320 graphics. Here you're looking at Motorola's X8 computing platform, as they call it. This is Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro, but 1.7 gigahertz. But instead of the usual quad-core, it's a dual-core. And instead what they've done is they've added in two custom computing cores that handle the always-on voice recognition and the motion sensing for it. So they've foregone a little bit of horsepower there for main processing instead to give you some usability features, which I think are really rocking. You got Adreno 320 graphics on this, by the way. So you're still looking at good graphics performance on both of these for gaming. So are you a specs maven or are you somebody who says, well, I could use some usability features? And you should watch our Moto X video review and read our written review if, if you haven't. But the two usability features I'm talking about, and there's a couple more, but there's the always on voice command option, and that's really cool. Even if the phone is asleep on your desk, you just use the key command. Okay, Google now. What time is it? The time is 3.35 p.m. And I didn't have to hesitate before I spoke, you know, so it actually prompted me to say, okay, come on, fool, I'm ready. Uh, but that is really handy. You don't even have to touch the phone. Very important if you're driving. So I really like that feature a lot. Yes, you have voice command here. We have the little voice mate that LG makes, and it, it can be left always resonant, but it's going to use more power than on the Moto X, which has that custom low-power computing core just to use it. Also, I find the Moto X is a little bit more talented at listening to natural language queries. The other thing is the neat home screen. If this has been turned off for a while, we'll give it a little bit, and then you pick it up and just move it. We'll put it on the desk. When we talk about that, we'll just let it sit there for a minute. When you pick it up, it's going to show you an unlock symbol, and also if you've got any notifications, and you can drag up on those. Say it says you've got a new email, you can just drag up and see a preview of that. So let's pick you up now. See? There it is, woken up. And it showed me the time without actually wasting more battery power by turning on the entire screen just so I can quickly see what time it is. The LG G2 does not have that nifty usability feature. One thing it does have that I like is the knock it feature. You don't actually have to use that oddly placed power button that's on the back. You just tap it twice to turn it off, tap it twice to wake it up. That easy. And if the timeout had passed, by the way, it would have gone to the lock screen and not the unlock version. So don't, don't worry, there's no security issue going on here. It's just that it didn't have time to actually fully lock the phone. When it comes to UI customization, we're also in very, very different worlds right here. This is very close to stock Android in terms of the UI. Yes, there are the Motorola Assist kind of things that we've got going on here that I showed you for usability. A couple more, you can put them both into quiet nighttime mode. Both of these have that feature, but very, very similar to stock Android, very clean. In that way, it's a lot more like the HTC One or a Nexus phone even in terms of that. Home screen, nothing too f fancy going on there. No UI widgets, whoopee woo, you know. Here we have icons that are customized by LG, and you can choose from various icons. They let you customize just about everything. Obviously, both of these have on-screen buttons. LG lets you choose the order that those buttons are in and actually add a couple of your own if you want to. If you take a look at the notifications here, now this is just notifications about what's going on with my phone, and if I tap over here, again, a lot like stock Android. A couple of things you have quick access to, and then if you want to go to all settings, the usual strip list. Here is the wild, wild west of information, isn't it? You've got all of LG's Q-Slide apps. You can float these guys as widgets up to two at a time, so you can have a notepad running, floating around, a calculator, even a transparent video player that's resizable. A lot like Samsung here, a lot of software. I know a lot of people do actually like that. You've got sliders for controls, and then your notifications are actually down at the bottom over here. And if we want to see all settings, again like Samsung, it's the four-tab approach. Networks, sound, display, and general all separated out for you. Different experience. That said, both of these are, are very fast phones. You, you would think that LG's software really slows things down. Well, of course, it has a really fast CPU, too, but it, it just doesn't slow the phone down. So for those of you who like the software but you're afraid of the bog kind of thing, it's not going to happen so much on the LG. For those of you who really like the clean experience, though, the Moto X is going to be the one for the win there. When it comes to data speeds, of course, this is going to vary depending on what carrier you're getting on the f getting the phone on. Both of these are on AT&T, which in our Dallas area has excellent data speeds, and we'll show you our results list in a minute, but we'll run the test. 
And let that one go to town. Not too, too bad for AT&T. We've seen better. Must be all those iPhone fods blocking down the network. Hmm. Call quality on both of these, by the way, excellent. Very nice full voice. It's You're looking at the same thing with either of these phones. They're both going to be very pleasing. And let's see how our Moto X does here for our real-time speed test. And it's going to top out a little bit higher, isn't it? Now, honestly, the, the variance from testing one minute to the other, well, there can be some variety. Well, let's look at our overall results. And then the Moto X tends to top out a little bit higher. You can see some insane speeds, like 30 megabit per second there. But its upload speeds tend to be a little bit slower. Isn't that interesting? But not by a whole lot. Moto does a really good radio, though. And generally speaking, they're top data speeds. But either of these is quite good. And both of these measure identical reception in terms of dB. These two have very different cameras. On the Moto X, we know there's the RGBC, that's C for a clear pixel, 10 megapixel camera on the Moto. It, it, that's supposed to help it with low light shots, shots, and it does okay with low light shots. 13 megapixel camera right here, Sony Exmor RS sensor. Awesome camera, right up there with the Samsung Galaxy S4 and some of the Lumia phones. I really, really like it. Great 1080p video. The Motorola, just okay. Also, amazing amount of settings that you've got here on the LG. You can choose from all of these modes, for example, and you can control just about every aspect of your shooting experience as well. So we're just going to choose normal. You can choose intelligent auto and it actually will reduce the amount of settings here, but lots of stuff to work with here. This has a modified version of Google's kind of arc settings here. So here you can see we have the arc settings and you can rotate those back and forth. Not a whole lot of settings. Flash control, you can turn HDR and panorama on and off, the slow-mo shooting for video. Uh, more limited, not exactly a photographer's delight for those of you who like a whole lot of settings. That said, you know, the iPhone does well on the market with very few settings too. And if you want to swipe in that way, you can actually start getting into your gallery, which is kind of cool too, and then swipe right back into the camera again. But overall, much better pictures on the LG G2. Much better video on the LG G2. Uh, great camera. Motorola is supposed to have some firmware to actually improve the Moto X a bit, but I think even with that, it's never going to come up there to rival the LG G2 or the Samsung Galaxy S4. For our full-featured LG G2 that has everything but the kitchen sink, we have an AV IR remote here. Controls all of your home theater gear. Uh, pretty easy to use. You can set up up to five rooms if you want. You can control DVD players, your AV receiver, your TV, your air conditioner even. Ah, that's a popular one lately with Samsung and LG both. Not going to be on our Moto X over here. Both of these have office suites. You get Polaris Office on the LG G2. You get Quick Office on the Moto X. They're both very capable. Pretty much a draw there. Both these phones have the same kind of wireless thing going on. Of course, we have LTE 4G here, Wi-Fi 802.11ac. That's the new standard for Wi-Fi. Bluetooth 4.0, NFC, your usual GPS as well. Both of these have batteries that are sealed inside. There is no way to take this back off easily here on our Motorola. The same thing is true of the LG. 2300 milliamp battery. There's just not enough room to put anything bigger in there. But Motorola with their custom computing cores really paid attention to battery life. And that's something we want to see from all manufacturers. And in fact, this phone has very good battery life. I easily make it through the day. Now, if you install a ton of widgets and applications that run in the background, I'm sure you can find a way to run this down. But with judicious use and installation of software, it's better than average, certainly. It's beating my HTC One and my Galaxy S4. LG has done some optimizations for battery life, too, and they've also added a little graphics RAM there to try to speed things up while using less power. We're not hitting on main memory quite in the same way as we normally do. Battery also sealed inside 3,000 milliamps. And, you know, it's got the fastest CPU in the business right here and a bigger display. It needs it, but that said, this also has excellent battery life. Even with all this software running on this that this just, just ships with, easily making it through an entire day. And I mean, going to bed at night, not charging it in the morning, it still has juice with moderate use. So that's the Moto X versus the LG G2. I as I've said in a couple of other Smackdowns lately, really there are some excellent Android smartphones out there, and either way you're going to get a really nice phone. But I think you can tell what's important here for the two of these. With Motorola, it's going to be the smaller size, how comfortable it is in hand, the, the customized backs that you can get, and the nice 
Kevlar kind of surface here, even if you go with the woven standard finish. Here you're getting the big battery, you're getting the big camera, and a whole lot of software on board, whereas here you're getting really clean looking Android. Which one's for you? Hopefully you have an idea now. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our video review of each of these devices, read our written reviews, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.